Hello YouTube, I want to share with you today a comparison between the Meteor 75 Pro Analog versus the Meteor 75 Pro HG0. I'm not going to do an entire review of these quads, there are plenty of reviews already on YouTube. I just want to help you decide maybe which one is best for you in terms of range, penetration, image quality, um, flight performance, uh, how long the batteries last. Um, that's what I want to focus on in this video. So the first thing to do is to put them on a scale. The analog one, it comes in at uh, 31.7 grams and the H0 version comes in at um, 35.2. So there is about three and a half grams of difference between them on an all-up weight if you include a battery of a little under 50 grams. The extra weight of the HD0 quad is going to impact how it flies and how long it flies. You can immediately notice when you take off that on the analog quad I can hover at around 30% throttle whereas on the HG0 quad I need uh, around 40% so that's 10% extra from those extra grams. The impact on fly time, um, to test this in a way that is consistent, um, I decided to fly both quads at a fairly leisurely place, uh, pace around my garden, flying through hoops, not going very fast, not doing any punch outs, not doing any um, freestyle maneuvers or anything so that it's repeatable. If you start doing freestyle and flying fast, there's going to be a lot more variability in, in how you fly. So I flew each quad, um, I think I flew three batteries on each, and I landed them when the battery reached 3.3 volts. Uh, there was a little bit of variance between batteries, but they were pretty close, and on the analog I managed around six minutes of flight time, whereas on the HD0 I would uh, manage only five minutes uh, maximum. So there's about one minute difference in, in fly time, if you fly slowly. If you're going to fly these squats a lot faster and you do punch outs and you do power loops and you do some freestyling, then um, it's going to be much more difficult for me to give reproducible accurate numbers because I'm, I'm not such a good pilot, uh, I can't do the same thing exactly the same twice with different quads. So I can only give you ballpark estimates. And I fly like this on the analog whoop. I get somewhere between two and a half and three minutes of flight time, more or less. Um, on the HD0, that would be closer to two minutes to two and a half minutes. So I, my best guess is you, s you lose about 30 seconds of flight time if you fly them fast. But that's uh, uh, more a guess than, uh, than something else. Um, in terms of image quality, um, I got to say I'm impressed by how good the analog camera looks on, on the Meteor if you combine it with uh, the HG0 goggles and uh, a decent module. I'm, I'm using the Foxy Wildfire here. Um, it, it, in terms of resolution, I, th I think it's quite okay. Um, of course, HG0 is better at 720p. There's, there's no question that you do get more details. But the big difference to me is not the, the resolution that's increased, but the frame rate. The fact that you have 60 frames per second, that's something you immediately notice. Um, it feels smoother, it feels faster. It's, um, it's a bit like playing a video game. If you play a video game at 25 25 frames per second or 60 frames per second, that's quite a difference. And I have the same flying HG0 compared to analog. Um, the, the extra resolution is nice, but it's not a massive difference to me. Uh, the bigger difference is um, how it feels, the, the smoothness, the responsiveness. Um, you do pay a little price for that because it's heavier. Um, you do notice the weight, uh, although 
I have to say, I think I only notice it because I fly one after the other and then, yes, you have to give a little more throttle. Yes, the hang time is a little bit less. Uh, the punch outs are a little bit weaker. Um, but uh, the difference is subtle and I wouldn't go as far as say that the HD0 version is too heavy. I, I think it's just fine. I think it flies great. I wouldn't be too sure if the same is true for the 65mm version. I think that might start becoming too heavy. Uh, so if you do want an HD0 um, whoop, I wouldn't go any smaller than this. Uh, I think this is where the difference becomes noticeable. And I think if you go even smaller, then the difference is going to start becoming problematic. Okay, um, uh, you see me flying a little bit over and around the house here, so you're seeing some breakup in the image. Um, let's do some proper testing of range and penetration and see how the analog and AG0 systems stack up in that regard. Okay, so um, here I'm sitting in my uh, garden lounge and I'm facing the street so that my antennas are pointing towards the street and then I try to fly around the house uh, on, on both quads and so you can com compare how the systems handle poor signal. Uh, the analog VTX, um, I don't know if it's 350 or 400 milliwatts, the I think the spec sheet says 350, the VTX table says 400. Well, it's one or the other. And when I do the same thing with the AG0 at just 200 milliwatts, so half uh, the power, you will notice that the penetration or the range is probably not much better. Um, a little bit, but what it's much better is the way the signal degrades. Instead of having flickering and, and the image moving and shearing, uh, you just get white dots, but it remains steady, the image. And this to me is much easier to fly through, it's much easier to ignore than the entire image getting distorted and wobbling. And, and uh, I heard somebody else compare this to raindrops raindrops falling on the windscreen and I think that's uh, an accurate comparison. You can see through it and it's very easy to see where you are, what you are doing, despite those white, this white noise, it's, it's, it's really not that distracting. Then I try this again from another location, just sitting at a table. Um, I have a lot better reception here and the reason I'm doing this again is, well, first to show you that both systems can penetrate the house relatively easy if you pick a, a better spot. Um, but also because the AG0 system, when I did this, I did not notice um, that I had it in 25 milliwatts. And what you're seeing here is the analog on 400 milliwatts, and it's, it's doing okay. There's this little bit of shimmering and there's some noise, but this isn't too bad. This is fairly easy to fly through. But now, look in the top left, it says 25 milliwatt. And I'm not 100% sure that is correct. I'm using the VTX tables from AG0 website, so this should be. I also think the on-screen display is rendered by AG0, so I assume it's correct. But this is almost as good as 200 milliwatts. It's hardly any difference. And it's as good, it's better than the analog at uh, 400 milliwatts. So if this really is just 25 milliwatts, this is quite impressive. Now, I, I don't know if anybody has tested this. Does this really work at 25 milliwatt or is this 100? If, if you do know that, please leave a comment uh, below because I'm, I'm, I'm really curious because this to me is fairly astonishing to get this sort of penetration on an uh, uncompressed 25 milliwatt signal. The 
the last test I wanted to do was uh, low light. Now, of course, we're not really comparing AG0 with analog here. There are other analog cameras that work really well in the dark. Um, it's just the particular camera that uh, Beta FPV put on the Meteor. And I will say that um, in my goggles, the analog camera was perfectly flyable. Um, at least as long as I uh, was under street lights and I had a lit lit road, it, it was it was much better than the recording. It didn't seem this dark to me. It's not to say that AG0 is way, way better here, the camera. It's much better in the dark. And also the range. Um, I, I did a bit of a range test here. I flew as far as I dared or until the image started to break up. And with the AG0, I got about twice as far as with, uh, with analog. And then the very last thing I did was testing these uh, cameras in my garden, which is even darker than the street. And here it's no contest. The analog camera, I, I tried, but it was just uh, uh, a black hole. The, I couldn't see anything on the ground. I have these LED lit loops uh, that I made. And of course you can see those, but if you do not have any ground information, that's so hard, it's, uh, it's too hard for me. The HD0 camera, um, you still saw a little bit on the ground, just enough to be able to judge your altitude and your speed. And to me, this is flyable. This, uh, this is going to be fun in winter. I will be able to fly uh, in the evenings. Um, I don't have to put up a lot of extra uh, garden lights. Um, it's, it's good enough. It can even spot a dark cat in the night. So that's all the evidence you need, I think. It's a, it's a reasonably good low light camera. One last thing we have to compare, of course, is the price. Um, as I'm recording this, the AG0 version is uh, $210 or thereabouts. And the analog version is uh, around a hundred dollars, so it's uh, it's roughly twice as expensive. Um, now, whether that makes it a good deal or not, um, I'd say it depends. It's it's up to you to decide. Um, I like both my meteors. I fly them both, and I will continue to fly them both. Um, I like the analog one for because it's a little bit zippier and a little bit uh, faster. And because it's cheaper, it's also, um, if you do things where you take risks that you might end up in a tree or in a lake or you're gonna, you expect to crash a lot and very hard, I will prefer to take uh, the analog uh, when it's dark or when I want a better experience, I will take the, the digital. So I'll, I'll probably just keep flying them both. Um, I hope this video was uh, in any way helpful to you, and if it was, um, you know what to do. Thank you for sticking till the end, and see you next time.